okay so uh, very good morning everyone i am uh, dr shaka mishra yeah am i hello ma'am yeah ma'am moc shall i start moc ma'am yeah sure good morning on and all present here i feel privileged to excite my warm welcome to all who are virtually present here for their industrial opportunities collaboration for patients first and foremost with the divine blessing of our beloved founder of ks ksr educational institution led dr ks rangasamy ayya mjf now would i now i would like to invite Ms. P. Charmadi from Second MSc Physics, KSR Castle W, to present the welcome address. Thank to one and all present here. I feel so glad to express my cordial welcome to all for the wonderful session on virtual meeting. We would like to start the program with the divine blessing of our honorable founder. Late line, Dr. K. S. Rangasamy Ayya, MJF, K. S. R. Educational Institution. It it is my great pleasure to welcome our dynamic chairman, Mr. R. Srinivasan, and vice chairman, Mr. K. S. Sachin, K. S. R. Educational Institution in absentia. My warm welcome to the executive directorses, Mrs. Kavita Srinivasan, in absentia. Thank you, Mr. Chair, to this remarkable session. Welcome you, ma'am. I express my cheerful welcome to the most active principal, Dr. M. Karthikeyan, KSR College of Arts and Science for Women in Absentia. I am happy to welcome Dr. V. P. Devarajan, Head Department of Physics, and all the faculty members of KSR College of Arts and Science for Women. Welcome you all. Also, I gladly welcome all my friends to this beneficial program. Welcome you all. Thank you all for your valuable presence. And once again, I gladly welcome you all. Have a nice day. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Ms. P. Charmadi, for your warm welcome address. Next, I would like to call upon Ms. P. A. Niveta from Second M. S. C. Physics, K. S. R. Cas. W. for our chief guest introduction. Good morning and welcome to our event. I am delighted to introduce our chief guest, Dr. Swetha Mishra, Assistant Professor, Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, who has warmly accepted our invitation to join us today on virtual meeting. She worked as Assistant Professor at Dr. D. Y. Patil Institute of Pharmaceutical Science and Research in Pune and Acropolis Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research Indoor MP, and also Sri Aurobindo Institute of Pharmacy Indoor MP. She is a lifetime member of APTI Innovation Manager in DPU Pharmacy Institute Innovation Council, and also in Innovation and HRD Impact Lecture Series Organized Association with MOE and Aurobindo Institute of Pharmacy Indore. The achievements and awards offer success, namely as zonal level winner of the Anvision Student Research Convention under the Health Science Discipline at the. Anna Patel University and got a cash prize for twenty-five thousand INR in oral presentation at national conference held at Chinkara University, Chandigarh, and also qualified GP AT. She attended and participated various national and international conference seminars and workshop. She is a design. Then Babu Nagar, the discovery of anti-diabetic agents, and also scientific and technical writing. She is a professional trainer of various colleges, namely as Drugs Delivery Hackathon on September 2 to November 31st, 2020, as a mentor for discovering the drug in treatment of COVID-19. We are very grateful to Dr. Swetha Mishra for accepting our invitation and marking her presence here. Once again, I welcome you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. P. A. Niveta, your for your delightful introduction about our chief guest. Today is uh, your opportunity to build tomorrow you want. Without taking much of your time, now would I like to invite our honourable chief guest, Dr. Shweta Mishra. Now the section is yours, ma'am. Thank you so much, and uh, for uh, this uh, delightful. 
delightful and heartwarming uh, introduction of mine. So without further delay, let me just uh, share my presentation screen. I hope it is visible to everyone. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma OK. So uh, Devin sir has given me a very wonderful topic on the industry opportunities and collaborations for the patent. But um, before moving ahead, let me ask you one thing that according to you, what exactly is going to be called as a property? Uh, I hope uh, the attendees are given the right to unmute themselves and interact because I want this session to be very interactive. So what is going to be called as a property? according to you anyone nivedita So basically property is something which is going to be tangible, which you can touch, you can feel and in return you can monetize it, you can sell it at any time, you can purchase it. So all those things are going to be considered as a property. If we are talking about the uh, Virat Kohli and uh, all the four villas which he has owned, the villa he has owned, um, the house, farmhouse, everything that is going to be considered as a property for a layman. But when it comes to an intellectual, the creations from which is going to be coming from your mind that may be some sort of a, a painting that may be in a sort of a poem that may be in a sort of a, say, for example, flyer. So that is all coming from your creative mind. So that is going to be the meaning of intellectual. And when we are talking about the intellectual property, so it refers to the creation of the mind, such as inventions, literary or artistic works, designs, symbols, names and images which we use in the commercial background. So this is going to be protected by the law. Uh, there are various type of intellectual property rights like patents, copyright it's geographical designs, uh, geographical indicators and um, trademarks which enable people to learn and earn uh, the recognition or the financial benefit from what they invent or create. So if you are discovering something, if you are inventing something, if you are coming out of something new thing, which was not available in the existing market, then you can go for such intellectual property rights. So IP, the intellectual property is considered as a property because it can be sold, it can be bought, it can be put on the lease, it can be rented and uh, over the generation it can be passed as a will also. It can be assigned to a, some person or to some company also. So all those rights which you have for your tangible property, the same rights you also hold for your intangible property which comes under the intellectual property. So that's the reason an intellectual thing is also going to be considered as a property. So um, coming from a, a Bollywood thing, so uh, there is a famous dialogue from the Diwar movie ki, Aaj paas bangla hai, bang balance hai, gaadi hai, tumhare paas kya hai? So if you are having a patent, if you are having a copyright, you can definitely go for ki, haan, we, we have the intellectual property rights. So uh, what are the main reasons why you think that the companies are interested in the product or technological innovations. Why, according to you, any company is interested to go for the IPR? Yes, my attendees. Anyone? From the MSc first year, second year, anyone? Shripa, Meduna, anyone? Most of the companies, they are interested in products or the technological innovations because they want to protect their innovation so that they can cut or they can prevent the competition from their market and they can stand out alone in their uh, forte or in their field. So they protect the innovations. The company file patent, which provides them exclusive rights of 25 years to secure their inventions and prevent the competitors from using them without the permission. 
and obviously that creates a market advantage because it allows the industries to give the exclusive rights for their technology whom to sell whom to distribute at what cost they need to sell so this is giving them a market advantage and obviously if uh, that company is going for a merger or that company is going for a collaboration with some another company then they can monetize the intellectual property so as i have already told that the patent also comes under the intellectual property and like some another property it can be licensed sold and that's how the monetization things comes into picture if you for a new company and for the technology which you are running in your company for product which you are having which you are selling for those specific things if you are holding a patent if you are holding an exclusive rights then of course the investors would be very much attracted and interested to invest in such a company which has a uh, which has prevented all the competitors from the market by filing an ipr so that's how a strong patent portfolio can attract the companies for the investors acquisitions and partners say for example dyson i hope everyone has heard about the dyson vacuum cleaner so what new it has done it is not like you haven't heard about the vacuum cleaner so far without the uh, uh, naming of a dyson company but what it has done is the n number of companies which are you you are listening right now you you might have seen so far in the vacuum cleaner region they always have a bag in order to collect all the dirt material or the dust particles dirt particles which are accumulated that is going to be collected on a bag that bag is responsible for reduction the suction power of the uh, vacuum cleaner and that's how dyson come out with a new concept that its vacuum cleaner is not going to have a bag and that was developed by james dyson and that's how the dyson company came so the vacuum cleaner particularly uses the centrifugal force to trap out the dust particle dirt particle and expel the air in order to maximize the suction so this was the creativity this was the innovation this was the invention and that's how they have gone for the patenting thing that's how if you compare the vacuum cleaner price of a dyson with the vacuum cleaner price of say for example eureka forbes their costing difference is quite high coming on to the next what are the different type of patents where industries might be just uh, interested in so uh, they are much of interested into the utility patents design patents software or the pharmaceutical patents and then the software and the technological patents so when we are talking about the utility patents so by the utility patents i mean that if you are creating something new or if in the existing technology you are improving that you are improvising that which is um, say for example reducing the time or something like that then that comes under the utility patents so it is very common in the pharmaceuticals biotechnology industry manufacturing industry as well as in the electronic industry while if we are talking about the design patents so uh, this type of patent is mainly used in the automobile industry say for example honda creta so when they wanted to um, buy or manufacture at the starting point when they want to produce creta at that specific point they must have designed a specific structure that this is going to be the outline of a car how it is going to look like so that's where design patent comes in the picture that the design of the creta car should not be copied by someone else so that is how the design patent works it protects the visual appearance of a product rather than its function so you might have seen if we talk about the pepsi can so the can of the pepsi has been changed a lot with this years they have experimented n number of things and then they have came up with this specific can with a specific logo so that goes under the uh, design patents it is significant for the customer goods automobiles and the electronic industries coming to the biotech or the pharma company so they produce the new drug molecule new formulation new type of a dosage form some type of a biotechnology process which is new which is not ex existing into the market then all these things can be go for the patenting 
they uh, there they have a very high value if the pharmaceutical company if any healthcare industry is having their patents so uh, lastly if we talk about the software and the technological patents so in this the software patents protect the new algorithm or the data processing systems mostly uh, in the software industry you can go most for the copyright less for the patenting because in the patenting of the software you must be needing some data processing method not directly a code can go for the patent so that is the basic difference in between the copyright and the patent in the case of the software industry now coming about um, the value of the patent portfolios in the mergers and acquisition if two companies are going for the merger on what basis a company needs to decide that what they need to pay to a smaller company and how to acquire that specific company so in that case also the patent portfolio plays a major role for any technological or the pharmaceutical industry having a robust patent portfolio it obviously increases the patent company's valuation and often it is going to be the deciding factor in the mergers acquisitions and partnership that at what cost the company need to pay the smaller company to get it acquainted to go for the merger so that is going to be decide on what is going to be your value if you are standing in the market what is the value of your technology so that monetization is going to be on the basis of how many patents you are going to have how many copyrights you are going to have how many trademark you are going to have what is the geographical indication so all these factors matters if you go for the patent portfolio of a specific company company like google and microsoft acquire startups for their patents there is a very good case study that google has acquired motorola primarily for its patent portfolio motorola has owning a patent that they would be uh, working on the android phone and in order to avoid the litigation of that specific patent google has acquired motorola and all the mobile phones which right now from the google is going to manufacture that is basically the motorola r&d team who is working on the mobile phones of the google so that is how they have worked together licensing as an uh, econ in income stream so if a company is able to generate the revenue by providing the license of their part patented technologies to the other firm you might have seen some companies using some another company's name and they are increasing their business so in a way they have buy their license of the some uh, else someone else companies and that's how they are using their name so uh, that's how the licensing thing can start generating a revenue if your company is having a good ipr then what is going to be the role of patents in some of the key industry say for example if we are talking about the pharma industry so uh, there are n number of new drug formulations by the r and d uh, if a drug is going to come into the market it typically takes 18 to 25 years before reaching in the market it takes that many years for a r and d for the human trial for the animal trial and after that it reaches to the market so it is a very uh, lump sum investment in the aspect of a pharma company and that's how they want to get it back from the customers or the patients so that's that's the reason where the patents play a important role that protects a specific pharma company to avoid the competitors coming in the market so uh, i have quoted an example that the patent protection from a blockbuster drug lipitor lipitor is a type of a atorvis statin drug which is given to a cardiovascular patients so that they can't go for the stroke or the heart type of a diseases where this particular medication is given so that it can dissolve all type of a clot which is available in the blood vessel so uh, pfizer has exclusive rights for this specific drug before the generics can enter into the market so that is how the market hold plays a major role in the industry if you are holding a patent 
then talking about the technological sector in the technological sector patents on the hardware and the software innovations are the key for the patent product um, differentiation and the market control say for example do you have any idea how many patents apple holds apple holds a patent for its iphone's unique design interface which keeps it away from all the android users and that's how the iphone has created its own uh, customer segment so that is how the technology sector works coming on to the automotive industry the automakers filed the design patent and the utility patent uh, for a new vehicle technology like for example if we take then tesla holds numerous patents for the electro ev uh, innovations giving it a new hard start in the ev market so that is how the role of the patents is going to play a critical very critical role in the growth of a company how we need to go for the collaborations for the patent development so uh, before starting to how we need to take first we need to understand why you need to collaborate so you need to collaborate so as you can access the specialized expertise so um, if we are talking about the specialized expertise a company may have only one r and d division but when we are talking about an academic institution there are n number of professors who are having n number of students under them who are working on a research forte so academic researchers have a, a very deep knowledge in the niche area like the physics chemistry biotechnology which industries can leverage for their innovative products accelerated r&d can happen which can uh, these collaborations can lead to the faster r&d uh, outputs which is uh, uh, using the combined resources from the industry as well as from the academia and obviously the cost would be shared for the resources for the patent filings and the legal costing so that's how it is not going to be burdensome on any one of them so that is why you need to go for the collaboration now if we go to understand deep about how many type of collaborations are going to be there then uh, there is uh, there is going to be the industry uh, on the university partnership then there is going to have the joint ventures and then you can have the public private partnership so when we are talking about the university industry partnership in that and universities have immense of the research capabilities so industries can collaborate with them to provide the commercial pathway so for example the pfizer and oxford university they have collaborated to develop the covid-19 vaccines then the joint venture comes in place where two companies are working hand in hand say for example general motors and honda have a joint venture to develop the next generation fuel uh, hydrogen fuel cells so uh, talking about the public private relation par partnerships the nih which is the national institute of health is partnering with the biotech firms for the cancer research so you need to develop yourself in such a way that the uh, that uh, the other companies can come up to you that okay we want to have a collaboration with you that how you need to develop first your field your forte then what are should be the steps to go for the industry academia collaboration as we all are from the academicians then we need to know that how we can go for the collaboration so the first step is going to be that you need to identify the common goals what is the common goal between a uh, industry whom you want to have a collaboration and in your uh, particular uh, field like say for example physics so in whatever company is particularly working on this specific field that you need to identify so there needs to be an alignment between the market and the uh, research need an academician institute should understand the commercial needs while the industry should recognize the value of the foundational research so i'm not saying that they need to blindly rely on whatever data is being generated by the academia but they can use this academia as one of the most important resource in the research so the collaboration in the renewable energy research can align with the industry's move towards the sustainability because this is one of the most important parameter which every industry needs to develop after that while going for the ip agreement one need to decide who is going to own that 
particular ip so there needs to be clear agreement on who is going to own that in order to avoid any type of clashing in the later stages say for example in a collaborative research the uh, university might retain the patent ownership so that it can help them in the nirf nda or the nac ranking but the company itself holds the exclusive rights for the licensing uh whom to distribute whom not to distribute what to sell what not to sell at what cost it needs to sell so like that the uh, it would be win win situation for both the academia as well as the industry after that it can support for the licensing and the commercialization where you can negotiate the terms based on the revenue sharing model based on your loyalty program based on your exclusivity you can come up to know that this is my commercialization value and accordingly if you want the license you need to pay me this much so this is going to be another um, loyalty payment program or it can be another your revenue generation program then coming on to the joint research programs there uh, academic institutions bring scientific expertise while industry offer the financial support and infrastructure say for example ibm and mit have collaborated on the quantum computing technologies so there are n number of advantages which is going to be uh having a win win situation for both the industry as well as academia if we go for the collaboration because we have to agree with this fact that uh, the infrastructure the financial state like a industry we can't have at the academia so now uh, coming to the next part of what type of opportunities kind of physics graduate can have so you can have a career in the intellectual property you can be a patent examiner you can go for the patent agent exam you can be an ip attorney you can be a technology transfer officer so how this thing going to work so in the case of patent examiner you need to review the patent applications to ensure that they are going to meet the legal standards say for example many graduates who are having a technical background in physics they can join the indian patent office as an uh, patent examiners likewise if you have they specialize in the patent law if you know about how which specific section needs to be played at what specific invention then you can be helpful for the uh, investors to file the patent and defend them in the court so in that way you can be an ip attorney so the patent attorneys have a technical degree because they need to understand what is the technology which they need to go for the patent so that is the first part they need to understand along with the second part comes where they need to defend the case of a client that this particular technology is novel and so far it was not available anywhere in india or abroad so that is going to be the work of the ip attorney so um, they are going to work in say for example in the nanotechnology in the renewable energy field and then comes the technology transfer officers so many companies needs technology transfer officers because when they are doing the r and d they are doing in a very small lab scale and then they need to transfer this lab scale transformation in to some kilos and tons of the manufacturing or the production so that's how they would be needing the technology transfer officers also if there is a good technology which has been patented by an academia and they need to use that specific technology for the same case they can use the technology transfer officer where they the technology transfer officer will be responsible for guiding for helping the industry to understand how the technology developed by the academia is going to work what should be the evaluation of, of that particular patent or the licensing thing so that is how it is going to work moving ahead what type of uh, you have already come to know about that uh, which specific uh, career path you need to choose so before going on that career path what type of specific skills you need to have so first is going to be you need to understand what is going to be the legal framework you need to have the knowledge of the ip law you need to have a proper knowledge of how the patent filing process occurs then you need to be knowing about the technical writing where you need to understand what are the different parts of a patent 
and uh, what a specific thing needs to be mentioned in a specific question which is going to be asked in a patent form so uh, you need to be able to very clearly uh, mention about what exactly your invention is all about and then the innovation management needs to be there where if once you have granted the patent so you need to maintain you need to manage that ip property for the next 25 years so that comes under the innovation management so all these skills would be requiring if you see your career in ip moving ahead discussing about a case study which uh, has been followed because of a patent successful patent collaborations so the first example i have taken is of stanford university and the roche pharmaceuticals so the collaboration between these two has happened in order to develop antiviral drug for the hiv treatment and this partnership results in the commercializing and the patenting innovative antiviral therapies so this is the one of the very prevalent examples in the pharma industry after that if we are talking about the automobiles then the tesla and panasonic have collaborated hand in hand you already must be knowing about the financial state of the panasonic company panasonic there was an era when it was a very good company but over the period of time they were not upgrading themselves in the sense of technologies and that's how the tesla has acquired them and they are working both together to develop the lithium ion batteries which is leading to the patents for the electrical vehicles or the ev vehicles so they are particularly working on the ev batteries after that the third example is of the microsoft and the university of the washington where they are collaborating for the dna data storage collaborations so have you heard of um, a pen drive a usb cd hard disk so far you must be aware about but are you really aware about that a dna can also be uh, used as a storage device yes you heard me right that is where microsoft and university of washington are working on where the uh, information of the dna can be used to digitally save the information of a person into the dna obviously you can customize that that how many gbs you would be requiring into it that is going to be available in your dna capacity only but this is one of the uh, most uh, crucial and most important and uh, maleficent uh, invention which has been discovered so far then talking about what about the challenges which you are going to face at the time of the patent collaborations so few of the important conflicts which usually occur i have listed below that one is going to be the ip ownership conflicts many a times when multiple entities are working together there occurs a dispute that who is going to earn that uh, own or earn that particular ip property so in that case the pre collaboration agreements are going to work you need to uh, before going ahead you need to be very clear on the paperwork that okay i am going to hold this right and you are going to hold this right so it should be clear it should be transparent on both the parties before going ahead then uh, there must be there uh, might be an issue of the different timelines that the academic research is often exploratory and long term while industries are, are very short term they work on the research output basis if you are not giving the output then and there they decided not to give you the financial support or not to give you the resources so uh, the solution should be that there should be a very clear expectation what you expect uh, being an industry what is your expectation from your academia with the timelines and the deliverables that okay i you have to deliver this and this result by the next 6 months so that clarity needs to be there that each month what is the expectation from the industry so that there is very transparency from the day one moving ahead Uh, there can be the uh, complex negotiation terms can also be there that they want to negotiate uh, regarding the licensing terms regarding the revenue sharing regarding what is going to be the future use of ip then it makes some things very complicated so there the academia needs to have the legal experts 
uh, very in the very early process itself so that they can manage the negotiations and then some regulatory barriers can also happen uh, basically this mainly happens in the case of health care and the technology sectors where navigating the regulatory approval processes can slow down the innovation although you might have invented some things on the time but uh, until and unless you are regulatory approved nobody is going to give you uh, the market for the same so collaborations can include the regulatory experts so that they can streamline the compliance so what could be the best practices for the successful collaboration so these are the best practices that you need to have a clear agreement so that you can go for the uh, ip ownership what percentage of ip ownership is going to be held by you who is going to be applicant who is going to be the innovator what terms of the revenue sharing is going to be there so that you can avoid the conflict in the later on stages frequent frequent communications should be there between the partners uh, so that they can regularly update and they can have meeting so that uh, both the academia and industry can be on the same page together then uh, you can take the support from the ip cells so that you can have a overview of how the patent filing occurs and what all legal steps needs to be taken care of then uh, long term partnerships you need to be very much aware about uh, uh, how the sustainable innovation or um, what is going to be the future of this specific patent or this specific project which you are going to work with the uh, industry so these things needs to be very clear from the day one before proceeding ahead so now coming to the last aspect of my presentation what should be the conclusion or the key takeaways from my session the first thing is going to be the patent drives innovation protect your innovations inventions and create financial value through the exclusivity because each of the ipr provides you an exclusive rights over the period of years some say for example like patent it gives you an exclusive rights for the 25 years the exclusivity right duration varies from the ipr to ipr next is going to be the collaborations are going to be key being an academic institution we know that we have a restriction towards the financial edge towards the resources edge so for sure because of that reason you can have the collaborations with the industry where you can develop a patent you can bring together the research and you can go for the commercialization aspects also you can ask for equity or royalty from the industry in the uh, in the uh, terms for your research which you have provided to the industry and last there are n number of opportunities which are available for the students be it the ip attorney be it the patent agent they have a very good career option into the ipr so uh, they need to think about this seriously before going further that's it from my side now i am open for the questions if you are having any questions i am uh, here to answer you thank you so much ma'am for your knowledge presentation we really gained many ideas about the industrial opportunities collaboration for patients dear students and faculty members if you have any question about this session you feel free to ask your chief guest chief our chief <laughs> okay thank you
गुड आफ्टरनून मैम मैम या गुड आफ्टरनून मैम मैम स्पेसिफिक नेटवर्क इवेंट्स पति ये दाल सोलन है मैम सॉरी आई डिडन गेट यू मैम नेटवर्क इवेंट्स पति इधर है इंदा मारी लांग मैम इधर लायर को कोलैबोरेशन आप कुछ Uh, either you ask your query in English so that I would be able to understand what you are saying exactly. Ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, tell me about specific network events, ma'am, regarding collaboration. Yeah, you can have collaboration as per your invention or the research. Means it is not like that you are having a specific website and you can simply go there and you can check out the collaboration sites. Um, if uh, you are much into um, the forte of um, which is uh, involving around the physics theory, then basically you can go for the collaboration with the CSIR institutions because they are having many of the grants with them, like SRF, JRF, and all. So you can apply through the SRF, JRF also. And if uh, you don't want to go for the SRF or JRF directly, you can write a mail to them that uh, this is your uh, just giving them a brief about what your invention is all about, uh, not exactly. All the things disclosing about your um, uh, confidential information, but just giving them an overview that this is all about my research. So I wanted to have a collaboration with you. Uh, what all advantages they can have if they want to have a collaboration with you? If you are briefing all about that, then definitely they will have a collaboration with you in future. Harini, am I able to answer your query? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone else? Okay, thank you so much for having me. We are really thankful for your valuable lecture, ma'am. Now let me invite Ms. E. V. Ivashri from Second MSc Physics Case at Cast W for deliver the vote of thanks. Good afternoon to one and all present here. Thank you is one such prayer among them. It is a great privilege to propose vote of thanks to all who have witnessed. It is. It has a memorable and successfully even first i would like express my thanks from the depth of heart to hon our honorable chairman mr k mr r sinivasan and vice chairman mr k s sachin who is the pillar of ksr educational institution in absentia thank you sir my warm welcome to the executive directors mrs kavita sinivasan who is the backbone of ksr educational institution in absentia thank you ma'am feeling gratitude and not expressing it's it is like wrapping a present and not giving it now i like now i take this opportunity in the form of words to thank our chief guest dr swetha mishra thank you ma'am my deepest regards and sincere thanks to dr m kartikeyan principal ksr college of arts and science for women who is backbone and support to us thank you sir my hearty thanks to all the heads faculty members and participants from various department case or college of arts and science for women their support thank you all once again thank you all thank you ms vee vashri so for your delighted votes for thanks once again thank you all for your active participation now the section is wind up <laughs>